Hello, and welcome to my tech talk on Azure Traffic Manager. My name is Thomas Mitchell, and I bring to this session uh, over two and a half decades of expertise in enterprise infrastructure. That's me over there on the right. This session will cover Azure Traffic Manager's role in uh, cloud computing. Now, the intent of this tech talk is to provide you with uh, enough knowledge to speak intelligently about Azure Traffic Manager, whether it's with your peers or even during a job interview. You're not going to become an expert by watching this tech talk, but you will be able uh, to confidently discuss Traffic Manager should you find yourself discussing it in a job interview. Now, I'm not going to bore you with all my credentials, uh, other than to say that I have been a senior level uh, infrastructure engineer for over 25 years in the enterprise space and mostly within the Microsoft ecosystem. Now, I do want to invite you to visit my LinkedIn profile so you can see my complete resume. Feel free to shoot me a connection request uh, so that you can see what my extensive uh, job experience entails. Now, Azure a Traffic Manager is a DNS-based traffic load balancer. That's essentially what it is, is a load balancer. Uh, what this does is it allows you to distribute uh, traffic to your public-facing applications across the different global Azure regions. Traffic Manager also provides your public endpoints with high availability and uh, quick responsiveness. Its core function is to route user traffic across Azure's global infrastructure uh, to those public-facing applications while aiming to maintain uh, availability and responsiveness. Traffic Manager uses DNS to uh, navigate client requests to the right service endpoint, utilizing various traffic routing methods and performing health checks on each endpoint. Traffic Manager also supports application availability through endpoint monitoring and automatic uh, failover mechanisms. By directing traffic to the lowest latency endpoint, it helps improve application performance. Now, this tool facilitates maintenance without downtime as well uh, by rerouting traffic as needed, and it integrates external endpoints for both hybrid and uh, on-prem deployments. For larger deployments, Traffic Manager can employ what are called nested profiles in order to manage uh, complex traffic routing setups. In essence, Azure Traffic Manager provides what's really a comprehensive solution for managing application traffic, ensuring that those apps run smoothly and efficiently. Now, Azure Traffic Manager offers six distinct traffic routing methods, uh, each uh, being designed to cater to specific network management and uh, distribution needs. First, we have the uh, priority routing method. Now, this approach is uh, really beneficial when there is a need to designate a primary uh, service endpoint for all network traffic, ensuring a seamless user experience. In addition to the primary endpoint, it allows for the configuration of multiple backup endpoints. Now, these backups serve as a fail-safe, ensuring continuous service availability in the case uh, that the primary or any of the other backup endpoints becomes unavailable. Next is the weighted routing method. Now, this method is ideal for scenarios where uh, traffic needs to be distributed across a set of endpoints, each assigned a specific weight. The distribution of traffic is then based on these weights with equal weights leading to an even distribution across all endpoints. Altering these weights allows for a, uh, a proportional change in traffic distribution, which gives administrators finer control over traffic flow. The performance routing method comes into play, uh, particularly when endpoints are dispersed across uh, different geographic locations. This method prioritizes the user experience by directing users to the closest endpoint in terms of network latency. The result is optimized response times, uh, which is crucial for services requiring uh, quick interactions. Now, in the realm of geographic sensitivity, the geographic routing method stands out. Now, what this does is it directs users to specific endpoints based on the geographical origin of their DNS queries. 
Now, this capability is not only critical for adhering to data sovereignty mandates, uh, but also for the localization of content and tailoring of user experiences. It also provides valuable insights by measuring traffic from different regions. And then for traffic manager profiles that are limited to having only IPv4 or IPv6 addresses as endpoints, we have the multi-value routing method. Basically, in response to a query, this method is going to return all healthy endpoints, and this ensures robustness and reliability in network management. And then lastly, we have the subnet routing method. Now, this method offers a more granular approach. It involves mapping sets of end-user IP ranges to specific endpoints. When a request is received, the endpoint that corresponds to the source IP address range of the request is returned. This method's particularly useful for targeted content delivery and efficient traffic management. So at the end of the day, each of these routing methods uh, provided by Azure Traffic Manager offer uh, their own unique advantages, and they're tailored to specific network traffic scenarios and requirements. Their integration into network management strategies can significantly enhance performance, um, reliability, and user satisfaction. Now, take a look on your screen. Uh, in this diagram, we're looking at the priority routing method of Azure Traffic Manager. Uh, when a user makes a request through their browser, a DNS query is initiated. This query is processed by a recursive DNS service, which then requests the Traffic Manager for the best available endpoint. The Traffic Manager, uh, which is equipped with continuous health checks, then assesses the status of each endpoint. In this scenario, the primary endpoint, which is the highest priority, is marked as degraded. Consequently, the traffic manager then redirects the DNS response to the next highest priority endpoint that is fully operational. So here, failover A is online and has the second highest priority, which makes it the chosen endpoint for the DNS response. This response gets uh, sent back to the user's browser, and then the client connects directly to failover A, bypassing that degraded primary endpoint. This ensures that the user's connection remains uninterrupted and fast, uh, despite any issues with the primary service endpoint. Through this intelligent routing and real-time health assessment, Azure Traffic Manager uh, is able to ensure high availability and offer optimal performance by automatically redirecting traffic to the best available endpoint. Now, in this image, we have a representation of the weighted routing method uh, used by Traffic Manager. When a user initiates a request through the browser, a DNS query gets launched uh, to find the most suitable service endpoint. This request is then fielded by the recursive DNS service, which in turn consults, you guessed it, the Traffic Manager. The Traffic Manager, uh, armed with its ongoing health checks, then evaluates the status of each endpoint. In this scenario, we can see that region A, although having a significant weight of 50, is marked as degraded. So consequently, Traffic Manager is not going to direct traffic to it. Instead, it selects an available endpoint at random with the likelihood of selection based on the assigned weights. Region B and test A, both uh, operational with weights of 50 and 5 respectively, are then considered. Now, given these weights, region B is 10 times more likely to be chosen than test A. The DNS response is then relayed back to the browser and then the user is connected directly to the chosen endpoint. And again, this ensures an efficient uh, distribution of traffic based on predefined weights without passing through Traffic Manager. This method provides a, a balanced load distribution, allowing administrators to manage the flow of network traffic uh, both strategically and efficiently. Now, in this image, we have the performance routing method uh, within Azure Traffic Manager. Now, this process begins when a user's browser issues a DNS query, which is first handled by a recursive DNS service. The service then engages Traffic Manager to determine the optimal endpoint. 
Traffic Manager uses a latency table, uh, which is mapping the user's source IP address to the nearest endpoint with the least latency. So for instance, a source IP within the range of 89.17.00/16 would find the West US endpoint to have a latency of 15 milliseconds, making it the ideal choice under normal circumstances. Now that said, if an endpoint such as endpoint one in the West US is experiencing issues and fails health checks, Traffic Manager is going to bypass it. It'll then select the next closest available endpoint uh, with acceptable latency. In this case, maybe endpoint two in North Europe or uh, maybe even three in East Asia. The DNS response uh, guides the browser to connect directly to the selected endpoint, ensuring that the user's experience is optimized for speed despite any regional endpoint issues. Now, here we have the geographic routing method. Now, in this case, a user begins the process by issuing a DNS query through their browser. The query gets picked up by a recursive DNS service, which then uh, seeks guidance from Traffic Manager. Traffic Manager then uses the source IP address of the DNS query to determine the user's geographic location. It then selects the most suitable endpoint that has been uh, pre-assigned to serve that specific geographical region. So for example, if a query comes from a location within Germany, the traffic manager would direct the DNS response to endpoint one designated for Germany. However, if the user's geographic location corresponds to areas like Mexico or Asia, the traffic manager might select a nested profile specifically set up to serve those regions. And for all the other locations around the world, endpoint two with a global assignment would be chosen. Now, once the decision is made, the DNS response is sent back to the browser, and then the user is connected directly to that selected endpoint without any intermediary uh, handling by the traffic manager. This method ensures that users are connected to the service endpoint that's geographically optimized for them, which enhances the user experience by reducing latency and even uh, complies with regional data regulation. Now, let's talk a little bit about endpoints. Now, Azure Traffic Manager facilitates the efficient uh, distribution of user traffic across uh, different internet services, and this is orchestrated through what are called endpoints. There's actually three types of endpoints that Traffic Manager supports. The first, Azure endpoints, are designed for services hosted within the Azure platform. That kind of makes sense. This category encompasses a, a variety of services like uh, platform as a service, cloud services, uh, Azure web apps, web app slots, all that stuff. In addition, public IP address resources, which are connected to virtual machines directly or through an Azure load balancer also fall under Azure endpoints. It's important to note that public IP address resources must be associated with a DNS name to be compatible with Traffic Manager. Uh, so keep that in mind. And next you have uh, external endpoints. Now, unlike Azure endpoints, external endpoints are used for services that are not hosted on Azure. Now, these services can be any internet facing service with an IPv4 or IPv6 address or a fully qualified domain name. This includes on-prem services uh, or even those hosted with other cloud providers. Traffic Manager's ability to directly return the A or Quad A records uh, simplifies DNS management and can improve the responsiveness of services. They can be used to add redundancy, reduce latency, or even extend the geographical reach of applications. And then we have nested endpoints. Nested endpoints are a feature that allows for the combination of multiple different Traffic Manager profiles. Now, this setup is uh, most useful for complex deployments, enabling the creation of flexible and, and really intricate uh, traffic routing schemes. In this structure, a, a child traffic manager profile acts as an endpoint within a parent profile. Now, this can also include a mixture of other endpoint types, such as additional nested profiles or any combination of Azure and external endpoints. 
by strategically implementing these endpoint types, Azure Traffic Manager ensures that internet traffic is efficiently managed and directed, and it optimizes the performance and reliability of applications for users around the globe. And then lastly here, I want to talk about endpoint monitoring. Now, Azure uh, Traffic Manager's endpoint monitoring is in a, a critical mechanism that continuously checks the health and performance of your application endpoints. Now, when setting up endpoint monitoring, you must define uh, several key parameters in your traffic manager profile. For example, uh, you have to, uh, for protocol, uh, choose between HTTP, HTTPS, or TCP protocols that the traffic manager will utilize to probe your endpoint. You can also uh, define the port. Now the port is the specific port on which the traffic manager is going to send health check requests. And then for the HTTP and HTTPS protocols, a path is required. This path directs to a specific web page or file that the traffic manager accesses during health probes. Custom headers allow you to add specific HTTP headers uh, to your health probes. This is uh, particularly uh, useful in multi-tenant environments or for identifying traffic manager requests. The expected status code ranges setting allows you to specify which HTTP status codes represent a successful help check. The probing interval allows you to decide how frequently the traffic manager uh, should check the health of a particular endpoint. And the uh, tolerated number of failures option uh, allows you to define the number of consecutive probe failures that occur before an endpoint is actually considered unhealthy. And then lastly, you have the probe timeout. Now, this determines how long the traffic manager is going to wait for a response uh, to a health probe uh, before timing out. So basically, endpoint monitoring operates by sending requests to the endpoints and then evaluating the responses. For HTTP and HTTPS, it makes a GET request. And then for TCP, it attempts to establish a connection. If the endpoint responds appropriately, it's marked as healthy. For unique monitoring needs, nested traffic manager profiles can be used to accommodate different settings for various endpoints. Furthermore, you have the ability to enable or disable monitoring for specific endpoints or for the entire traffic manager profile. This controls whether they are included in DNS responses. The system generated endpoint monitor status indicates the current health status of an endpoint and it can't be manually adjusted. This comprehensive monitoring setup ensures that traffic manager can effectively route traffic to the best available endpoint, thereby maximizing uptime and ensuring optimal performance for your applications. So to wrap things up, let's just recap what we covered. We started things off by taking a look at what Azure Traffic Manager is and what it's designed to do. We then took a look at the different routing methods that are available. And then we walked through the architecture and workflow of each uh, routing method uh, specifically before closing things out with endpoint types and endpoint monitoring. I'd like to thank you for joining me in this tech talk and I look forward to bringing you more insights into Azure and other cloud technologies in my other available tech talks.